Hey guys, part two on this Jeep Liberty coming at you. Today we're going to replace a, uh, let me think about it, idle air control valve. That's what's called IAC valve. Let me show you a little bit about that. Previous video we replaced the PVC valve over here. Now today we're going to replace the idle air control valve. Now again, this Jeep has been idling a little rough. It's been wanting to stall out. So we're going to replace a whole bunch of sensors and things. And uh, so today we're going to replace the idle air control valve, which is located right here on the underside of the throttle body. Now to do this, uh, again, I ordered OEM Mopar parts to do this. This is the idle air control valve which interestingly enough has a use by date. Uh, it says used before 120 of 2022, so I'm not really sure what that's about, but there is the part number if you need it, 04861552 Alpha Charlie. So the idle air control valve is actually pretty bulky. It was a lot bigger than I thought it would be. And I'm not really sure what it's all about. Now obviously it uh, helps stabilize your idle. That's why it's called the idle air control valve. And uh, here it is. Pretty hefty little device. You see it's got one, <clears throat> one mounting hole right there and uh, wiring connection there. So the way this goes in is that um, nut or bolt is on the bottom right side of it. So to get to this, we're going to disconnect a few connections. And this first one here, see these all come out of the same wire loom over here. So by disconnecting the three of these, we can move this wire loom over here along the fuel rail and then it's out of our way. So this will be your intake charge air temperature sensor. Pull up on the red tab. If it's stiff, you might need a screwdriver. I'm gonna have to get a screwdriver. Once you have the red tab slid, you simply push on it. And you'll find the right spot back here. There's a little tab, push that, and the sensor slides right off. Do the same thing for your throttle position sensor and squeeze and pull and the same thing down here on your IAC valve. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect those, get the wiring out of the way and we'll get ready to unbolt this uh, idle air control valve. To remove the intake tube, it's very simple. It uh, requires a 5 uh, socket wrench or um, what I like to do is I have a, um, I don't even know what you call this. It's like a 5 16 socket is a bit on a screwdriver and uh, so loosen up this clamp on the throttle body end that should be loose enough and then over here on your air box you got these little tabs like when you change your air filter. One on each side of the front. Pop those up. This will come off. Wiggle this just a little bit. And that'll pop off. And then the whole assembly comes off from the lid all the way to the straw body end. Set this aside. And now you have a lot more room to work with in this general area. All right, so unfortunately my video, uh, basically my whole day went terrible after this point. I had a lot of interruptions and it just, um, it was a mess. So let me explain to you what happened and what I did as far as finishing the idle air control valve. So obviously this is a different day. I've already replaced the uh, idle air control valve. The new one is in. But what I had to do was totally remove the throttle body. 
very easy to do. You got a vacuum line here, just pulls right off. I'm not gonna do it, but that pulls off. You have your throttle cable, and uh, I'm not quite sure what that one is, um, so I can't give you a definitive answer as to what that cable is. To remove those, you rock the throttle back, like so, and then this uh, the throttle wire, throttle cable slides right out the side. Okay, and that'll get that out. Now this other cable here, this is just a plastic clip. I don't know the best way to try to get in here to show you, but this plastic clip just pops right off. It just pulls right, right up. So if you have this tilted upward, you would just pull it straight up off. And then that'll take those two cables off. And then as far as bolts, there are five sixteenth. So you have one here, you have one here behind this vacuum line, and you have one down here on the bottom close to the center. So it's uh, in line with my finger right here. You remove those three bolts, and once you have um, all of your sensors disconnected, your whole throttle body will just come right off. There is a gasket behind that throttle body. Make sure if the gasket sticks to the throttle body, you don't lose it. Inspect the gasket. If it is tore or looks terrible, don't reuse it. If you've already got the throttle body off, go ahead and replace it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what else I did while the throttle body was off was uh, got some carb, carb cleaner and I just cleaned the throttle body out as best I could. Behind this intake opening, there's a lot of oil residue. It was discolored. Um, can't really see because of the lighting. But basically, it was dirty. I mean, 180 some thousand miles on it. It, it needed cleaned. So it's, uh, I sprayed it as best I could. I cleaned it as best I could. Now, the other thing that this does is it makes it a lot easier to replace the valves on the side, meaning the idle air control valve, okay? On this, there's a T20 Torx screw or bolt on the underside. See where this vacuum line comes across? That's where the T20 bolt is. With this throttle body off, it's a lot easier to get that T20 bolt out. Once you take that bolt out, this whole assembly, this idle air, the old one, slides right out. Now you may have to wiggle it a little bit because there are some O-rings, so wiggle it and it'll pull right out. Let me show you the old one. This is the original idle air control valve. I believe this is still the factory one from 2006. Depending on the lighting, you can see it's got a lot of uh, black residue, black um, dust, dirt. I mean, it, it's filthy. It's really, really dirty. So if you uh, look at the image of the new one compared to this one, you can tell that this is definitely filthy dirty and it's uh, probably a great thing that we replaced it. So to install the new one, Again, with the throttle body off, it's really easy. You simply push it in to the housing. Again, you can rotate it a little bit till you get it to line up right. Push it in, and then again, you just reinstall your T20 Torx bolt, and you're done. It can only go in one way because it only has one bolt. So you don't have to worry about any directions or, um, or it being directional and how it goes in there. Since it's only got one bolt, it can only go in one way. To put it back together, simply make sure your gasket is in place. Now the gasket has a groove that it lays in on the intake side, not on the throttle body itself, because the throttle body plate is flat on the back. There's a groove that it'll lay in. Put your throttle body in place, and then just put your three 5 16 bolts back in. Once those are in, put your throttle cable back on, put this black clip for this cable back in place. Remember, it just pops off and pops right back on. Reconnect your vacuum line, 
connect your throttle position sensor, connect your IAC control valve sensor, or the, uh, the plug. Then to reinstall the intake tube, it's the exact opposite of removing it. Put the hose on, tighten the hose clamp, put your air box lid on. Remember, it's got these little holes. So you, you put it on, in, down, and then flip your little clips in the front, and you're done. So that is the process for replacing the idle air control valve on a 2006 Jeep Liberty 3.7.